works, but probably most famously a, a little company called Riga, you guys may have heard of, been around for 40 plus years. They make turntables and most other things. Uh, and tonight we're going to get to hear a couple cuts off of their flagship turntable called the RP10. Um, the RP10 is very similar to this and Uh And it, in fact, it, it fulfills in many ways the 40 plus year goal of Riga, which is to produce a turntable that does virtually nothing but is incredibly strong. Uh, and it's the same methodology that Wilson Manesh does. And we can get into a long discussion of engineering philosophy and physics as to why this works. But the basic premise is the lighter weight you make something, the less energy it can store. Uh, and therefore, you reduce resonance, you reduce distortion. Um, the only trick here is, and this is the strength part, you have to build it incredibly strong. Uh, if it's flimsy, the low mass doesn't do you any good because it's creating all kinds of other problems, right? So that's been this goal. Both Wilson Banesh and uh, Riga adhere to this idea of low mass, uh, high strength. Um, if you ever get to see one pulled apart, the plinth, the actual base for the turntable, is made from a, a foam polyolefin. It's actually a nitrogen foam polyolefin. Uh, and if you strip all the metal bits off, it weighs less than two ounces. Uh, it's the same material that's used for uh, hard hats and for safety helmets. Yeah. So it's this incredibly strong material. It's uh, built using a sandwich construction, so it's uh, interior foam with a phenolic skin. And generally, if we were doing a, a all reader presentation, I'd have that thing pulled apart. And I'd actually hand someone, who's the biggest guy in the room? No one's going to claim this. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. Whoever the biggest guy in the room is, if we were doing this the right way, I'd have you try to break. Uh, <laughs> I'd have you try to break it. Uh, and, and I've been presenting this material now for the last two years, and I've not yet had anyone break it. By the way, I would pay to replace it if you could break it. Um, so that's a little bit on Riga. Uh, they're best known for turntables, but they do produce a whole variety of products, amplifiers, DAX, and player speakers, the whole deal. Uh, and last but not least, and maybe the most interesting product uh, for my company amongst a uh, variety of interesting things uh, is a new server product called Melka. Uh, and for those of you that were, that were living and breathing hi-fi back in the 1970s, you may remember Melka as a turntable manufacturer. Uh, of all things, the, the founder of Melco got smart in the late 70s and early 80s and said, you know, this whole audio file thing is really cool and I'm really into it. But there's these, these things called PCs. You guys may have heard of those. Uh, and they're incredibly popular. And he decided to turn Melco into a company you might have heard of called Buffalo Technologies, mm -hmm. uh, which is a massive, uh, multi billion dollar multinational uh, tech manufacturer. They produce most of storage devices. So now, fast forward 40 years. Melco becomes Buffalo, and then Buffalo rebirths the Melco brand name <coughs> and releases an audiophile server. So they've literally gone back to their roots in the world of audiophile source components and uh, applied 40 years worth of learning, 30 plus years worth of learning in the IT sector uh, to produce a server that is both lives up to the audiophile idea, right? We're all looking for the best sound quality possible to listen to our music at the best quality possible. Uh, but also to be able to do that uh, with a remarkable ease. It eliminates the computer, it eliminates the NAS drive, uh, plugs into anything Ethernet based, anything or USB based, uh, operates from a mobile device. Um, and all of the standard functionality, the thing that you would need your computer audio system to do, are all on it. Uh, so for those of you that haven't yet taken the plunge into computer audio because you fear the computer, for those of you that have taken the plunge into computer audio and you fear the computer, um, Melk is a product to consider. Um, I, I've used one now for the last year. They sound fantastic, uh, and they really are uh, simple to use. They can live up to that idea of LC consider. So that's the system. Um, and now I'll hand it over to my dad, Alex, who will present the last piece, the missing piece of the puzzle. Uh, a brand new amplifier coming that you like? Yeah, uh, an integrated amplifier, which embed a, a DAC, uh, phone stage, and the uh, power uh, units. Um, so it's, yeah, the dual mono here. Uh, it's a two channel, 1000 watt uh, uh, power amplifier. Uh, you can actually configure it uh, directly from our website and basically set everything from this cartridge sensitivity to uh, the kind of speaker that you have. Uh, we have a 
company holds more than 80 patents. From uh, the DAC to the, a the hybrid system inside, uh, it's actually class A. So a hybrid system, class A, class D. So you have the class A uh, amplifying the music signal. Um, in parallel, and slate to the class A, there is a class D that brings all the current outputs. Uh, so it's uh, which makes which make a very efficient class A amplifier with very low stop. Uh, distortion right now on 1000 is 0.0005%, so it's extremely low. Uh, same thing for the DAC, we have this pattern called Magic Wire, uh, where we use um, a uh, Texas instrument chip, but the stage just after it, that we use to make a conversion from tension to current, uh, which is really uh, use operational on the prior and the way we do it, uh, we use discrete components by just filter everything and make it very like 130 dB of noise uh, floor, so barely noticeable, so we can hear it uh, And yes, we convert the analog input to the stage, but it has a uh, first it's very transparent, so I ask anyone who can hear that there's some kind of digital. <coughs> And um, this gives us the ability to bring all that new features that the digital brings, uh, very user friendly, and do our technology called SAM. SAM uh, stands for Speaker Active Matching. It's a technology we use to optimize the signal and configure the amplifier for the <coughs> kind of speaker. We uh, today have uh, a list of 700 speakers on our database. So uh, if you have most of the occupied speaker on, on that list, um, it's doing, it's, what it does is face uh, um, correction. Uh, we measure the, the exclusion of the driver, the laser, the impedance of the wall system, and then we're able to make a real-time uh, physical model of the exclusion of the driver and optimize the exclusion to, to correct the mechanical stiffness of the system. Not changing the color of the speaker, of course, the idea is to make it flat and more transparent possible, uh, but reducing and going even lower in the base domain without any distortion, like a typical EQ would do. Uh, so, a lot of features, uh, the system is upgradable. So, we started from the deal premier, uh, a single unit. And we've made several several upgrades since 2010. One hardware upgrade, but most of our upgrade now comes in uh, right. as a software thing. Mm -hmm. So the, la uh, the last one, like a year ago, was uh, actually optimizing the core unit and the way we manage the heat dissipation. And <coughs> 170, uh, which was our best seller, became a 200. There's going to be a new update uh, in late September that will take that uh, 200 and we'll begin to uh, 220. But this will be a hardware change. So we will change the whole motor board and we will be a brand new unit except for the chassis. This is a design piece, but also it's used as a heat spare. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any questions about that. What else can I say? There's going to be also new features. Um, so we have our own technology to stream music. It's called the Daily Air for asynchronous instant and hunting, where you can stream in Wi-Fi or internet, uh, 24 bits and within 90 kilohertz tracks. Uh, you can even do TSD, play DSD from your computer or any kind of player. Um, but there's going to be a new upgrade next year that will embed uh, a noise board inside so we'll be able to do NPLNA so it will be a major server on its own. You can already stream to it with a uh, phone actually. There's an application that uh, the remote volume control can access the EQ and stream the music by installed on the device. Uh, that is going to be the next step where all our systems, Phantom, both Phantom and Expert, work together 
and uh, you really go to like your main system in your living room like that and uh, in the room, in your bedroom, in your friends and so they are in everywhere. And we can use the Spark application like you can see and you can do it. Uh, so the 1000 is the top, um, this is our best system, it's a 35,000 dollar system. And then the world line will be benefit from the other way, uh, from the 120 to the uh, to the one uh, the world line is not there. That's pretty much it. <laughs> if you have any question, um, you've already heard it, I guess. So, but this is a new group, but I, I can run a demo to Yeah, you with the uh, yeah. the interface. So again, the DAC is embedded inside, and you cannot, get, uh, you cannot bypass the DAC. Right? So it comes straight from the media server to U from USB to the inputs, and uh, then everything is done. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right now, yes. Yeah, there's there's a rel on the system right now. Hmm. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So actually, it's uh, you can configure the system to have a 2.1. Uh, you can set your crossover frequency. You can even set the delay between the subwoofer and your uh, zero pair. <coughs> Configure everything. You can use as it is now, which is factory configuration, but you can really have fun and configure very precisely the system uh, from the capture sensitivity to the frequency cutoff of your system. The, the subwoofer right now is being used uh, in a high level configuration, which yeah. is, if you're familiar with the RHEL product, how they prefer it hooked up. Uh, we're using it simply for sub base support, so it's not doing any of the base of the main system. Uh, it's crossed over in 23 or 24 hertz right now. So what's the really, slopes? What's that? What are the slopes? You know, I don't know much about that. I think it's a double 10, if I remember correctly, a forward firing passive and an active. No, no, the slopes of the crossover. Oh, uh, pretty shallow, 12 dB, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Oh, so I'm so. not from RAL, so I, right. I don't know specifically, but they're, they are very shallow as far as several birds are concerned. And that's that's essential when you're going to cross over below 30 hertz. So the, the, the whole premise of a RHEL is that what you've done is you've extended the deep base of the system without uh, overtaking what the speaker is capable of doing. So we couldn't configure it the typical way, which would be to use the pre-out of mm -hmm. the the dialect because it's a factory config, it's a new firmware version which is not yet accessible online, but you can do that actually. You use the standard uh, line level to the uh, subs or use the app, yeah, use the, I the speaker level. So who, who's ready for the most depressing piece of music you've ever heard? Oh, oh yeah. really? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, I it promise, sounds good. I, I promise it'll get better, but I wanted to play this for you for a number of reasons. Mm. A, uh, <clears throat> I totally get like shiver up my spine, practically in tears every time I hear this. And I think it really shows off um, the, the incredibly vanishing, is that the way of saying it? vanishingly low amount of both mechanical distortion and electrical distortion in the system uh, and, and how that favors uh, and, and not neutrality, which I think is a misused word a lot, but uh, naturalness. There's a sensation that you're not listening to a pair of speakers hooked up to an amplifier, which for us to all be honest with ourselves is kind of the goal of all of this, right? We just want the music. Um, so this is, I'm not gonna tell you who this is by, in fact, there's going to be a little bit of quiz, a little bit of a quiz after this. I want you to tell me who the song is about uh, when we're done, uh, uh, and then we'll we'll have a little chat.
before they were boys with their cars, summer jobs, oh my god. Yeah. And, and for those of you who aren't familiar with who John Wayne Gacy is, he was a, uh, a serial killer in the late, late 1960s yeah. uh, who, who dressed like a clown and yep. entertained kids and murdered a bunch of young, uh, young like, teenage boys. Uh, so it's, yeah, the subject material was maybe a little depressing. It's an amazing album. I would recommend it. An artist by the name of uh, uh, Cynthia Stevens. Not all the music is like that. <laughs> um, but if you like music with pathos and ethos, mm -hmm. if you like emotionally intense music, he's good for that. Name the album is Illinois. It's his home state is Illinois. So it's all songs about the state and various things. But it's come on, feel the Illinois. What's that? Come on, feel the Illinois. What's that? Come on, feel the Illinois. Yes. Yeah. 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 Come on, yeah, precisely. That's the full name. <laughs> but if you type in Illinois, like noise, like noise, right. audio oh, noise, oh, that's noise. the name of the album. Uh, okay. And it'll come up like that, which nice. is, I, I've always referred to. <laughs> Uh, okay, and now to something a little bit happier. Um, but do you guys, do you see what I mean? I mean? There's just no sensation that you're listening to as we're in a woofer and an amplifier. And none of that's there. There's no artifice to this whatsoever. Uh, and, and not only that, but it's just got this big lifelike sound to it. And it's the type of thing that I don't normally associate with, a, you know, a little tiny amplifier and a three-foot tall speaker. This is not that kind of sound. Okay, uh, next. Uh, so, um, have you guys ever heard the term headless orchestra? Anyone ever heard that terminology before? So, uh, uh, headless orchestras were the way that orchestras were 200 plus years ago. This is before the advent of the conductor, uh, hence the name, right? So there's no one standing in front of the orchestra telling them what to do. Uh, so you, you, ha you had to figure it out as a group, right? And so this is a pretty amazing feat to do if you've got 30 or 40 musicians, which is about the size of this orchestra, but it has a very unique sound. I've never heard a conducted orchestra do precisely what a headless orchestra can do for creating this really natural sense of movement in the music. Uh, what I like also about this is that you can literally hear the orchestra start because the way it happens, I don't know if you guys have ever seen chamber music, right, where you've got uh, three, four, five musicians on stage, and the, usually the lead, and I would, you know, the lead violinist or the lead trumpeter will lift their shoulders up, lift their uh, head up, and then drop, and that sets the tempo, right? So in a headless orchestra, you can literally see that, you know, you can imagine the principal violinist would lift his head up, the entire orchestra goes, and, they, and they're off and running. Um, uh, so you can hear that, that brief moment right before they start. Uh, this is a, a piece of Prokofiev. So Prokofiev is a 20th century composer. You guys are familiar, he's not a classical composer. Um, but in his early years, had a, a, a real fondness for Beethoven and Haydn and Mozart the Greats. And he composed 100 years after the death of Beethoven, so many, 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 many years later. Uh, and uh, he wrote this piece of early music. It's, a, it's his fourth symphony for orchestra uh, called the Classical Symphony. He wanted to mimic the style of the great classical composers. But being Prokofiev, it's, he's got his own little uh, twist uh, to this, but a very fun piece of music, even for those of you that might not consider classical the type of thing that you listen to. <laughs> Thank you. 
thing I got to tell you you can't replicate the feel of that with a conductor I don't know what it is I've played in performing groups for a number of years and the only thing I can think of is that when you're paying attention to what the conductor is doing there is a little bit of an auditory gap right between what your eye sees and what your mm -hmm. brain does and every single person in the orchestra gets it a little bit different right mm -hmm. uh, but if you're having to just pay attention with your ears as to what's going on around you uh, I think that there's a little bit of a hive mind thing that happens, particularly with a well-rehearsed uh, orchestra like this. Uh, and again, this is wonderful, vivid uh, tone quality to it. I mean, you know, this, this, this sounds like flutes and clarinets and violins, and, and it, it's just so fun. It's got so much energy, and, and it conveys the, the feel of the music so easily. Uh, What's the name of the orchestra? Uh, this is, oh, that's a good question. Why am I forgetting the name? I'll find it for you. A ask me afterwards. Right. It skipped, yeah, it skipped my head. Uh, they're, they're, a, they're a French orchestra, actually, and uh, I have to, uh, I'll, I'll think of them. Um, there's very, very few of them. It's, it's, they're kind of a novelty, right, these headless orchestras. It's not something you've seen anymore. What's that? I mean, you're saturated. Yeah, absolutely. sure. We can do that right now, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So we'll switch to some vinyl. By popular request. Good. So uh, I'll, I have to make an admission. This is the not only the, the recording that sold me on the idea of hi-fi. Uh, it's the it's the recording that sold me on the idea of vinyl as a viable medium. You remember, I'm fairly young, and you know my parents listened to vinyl when we were kids. But even by the time I was buying my own music, there was no vinyl in our house, right? Uh, and I had this played for me on a big expensive hi-fi system with a big expensive turntable and it totally changed my opinion. Um, so, so not only uh, is the great Satchmo an amazing trumpet player, but he's got a huge voice uh, and, and this really sets that off. This is a piece of music called St. James Infirmary, so I apologize, but it is, it is a little depressing. Uh, but I'll fix that for you.
went down to St. James in Farid. Saw my baby there. She was stretched out on a long white table. So cold, so sweet, so fair. Let her go, let her go. God bless her. Wherever she may be, she can search this wide world over, but she'll never find a sweet man like me. <laughs> Bring it. When I die, bury me in straight lace shoes. And a box bag suit, double breasted. Put a twenty dollar gold piece on my watch chain. Yes, so the boys will know that I died standing there. <laughs> Not bad for a 70 year old recording. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, just goes to show, you know, the, the, the power of uh, vinyl is real. For those of you who are unbelievers, mm -hmm. turn a turntable and experience it for yourself. Um, <coughs> Uh, any questions as, as I kind of keep going here? I've only got like two more tracks for you and then I hope you're done. Uh, and I can answer questions that I have. How many ohms are the speakers? Uh, six ohms. Uh, and fairly stable. Uh, at six ohms. Um, tube friendly, but, but high quality tubes. But certainly if you can put a, a very quiet, high power amplifier behind it. In this case, you know, we've got a thousand watts. Under six ohms. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we were obviously feeding a lot of very high quality low distortion power and then you're reaping benefits. And uh, the amplifier itself is really blind to the load. So even if you have like speaker with big impedance speed anywhere, the ADH score make it very blind so you can bring any kind of current, and uh, it's really like if nothing was on the, in the output. Um, even the lowest one, like the 120, the 200 is able to bring like 40 amps of current, which is huge. <laughs> yeah. On 